my sewing friends. How about a tour of my sewing room? I'm Jen and this isn't my sewing room. It's a guest room in my house, but we're going to get to my sewing room in just a second. But before we do that, I wanted to show you these. These are my bookshelves that I absolutely adore and they are full of old friends. The books that I've read and loved and a few that I haven't gotten to yet, but none that I wanted to part with. And I needed to relocate these bookshelves because they had been in my sewing room. You may have seen them at one time or another, but they found a new home in here. So I wanted to start with those so I could show you where they came from and how much better my sewing room is now all redesigned. So let's head over there. Here's that door. Oh my goodness. It was so hot outside when I made this thing. It was a bazillion degrees with a bazillion percent humidity in the sunshine, but you know, the end was worth it. And here is my sewing room. This isn't new. I've done a tour of this room before, but it didn't look like this. I'm gonna start right to my right. And to my right, I have something that's been here before. This hasn't changed. Uh, those are blinds that I need to put up, new blinds. And these are just my binders that hold all the envelopes for my patterns that turn into pattern catalogs. This is my homage to R2D2. And this is something some of you have been asking about. This is an ink on canvas. And it was done by a roommate of mine back when she was in art school. She needed to do an ink on canvas project. So she took a photograph of me, which she copied the photograph basically from my waist up. And then when I came home that day and she had been working on it, she said, okay, I need you to sit here on the floor so I can fill in the rest of this. So I put on those jean shorts and I sat down and I sat there for a long time. I remember because the floor was hard, but she finished it up and put me out in the middle of a field picking a dandelion. So I've kept it ever since. She didn't have any reason to keep it. And so she signed it and gave it to me. And now the great thing about it is that it's canvas and it's on a frame, like a stretcher frame. And so I can put pins into it without damaging it. And so it's my inspiration board I haven't started using it again yet, but I will. And it's nice to have it there. This is fabric and a few little cubbies that have got projects in process, some leftover project stuff, things I want to make soon, and then a fair amount of space where I can just set things, which is so nice. These cubbies were on this wall, but they had two more cubbies identical sitting on top of them and so it took up the entire wall and now I have all that wall space. It just really lightens and brightens up this room wonderfully. This is my FAF 7570 which I will never get rid of. It is a fabulous machine and it's out here so that I can grab it easily and use it for top stitching or stitching with another color thread if I need to do that. This is an example of what I want to do over on the other wall, which is frame patterns that I remember from my childhood and frame them with a photograph of me in the outfit. Usually these are things my mom made for me if I can. And uh, that'll just be a little piece of nostalgia for me. This is a basket with uh, patterns that I just want to do sooner than later. And then my little cart that's got art supplies and then here's my work station and one of the things that I've found is that one of the th the ways that you change things after you've set them up is that you realize that you work a certain way and you want to have certain things handy so this is my 2140 it's a faff and I really love this machine this is my new Juki what is this MO2000 QVP, which is a quilter's edition that I found recently. 
And then around where my sewing machine is, you may have this too, extra lighting, my glasses for when I can't see, white and black thread and tweezers and a seam gauge and a seam ripper. Yeah, my favorite friend. And uh, just clippers, pins, you know, little things that you always need within arm's reach when you're sewing. This little cart, I think I got at Michael's a while ago, and it's just got various things on it. You know what kind of stuff that is. Stuff that you need to just get your hand on really quickly, and it's easy for me to sit here and then reach immediately and get it. And here, as I come around the table, are those cubbies that used to be on top of the other ones. This is just more storage space, which I am just over the moon about and my two old antique machines that I can easily get to and use because you should be using your older machines. It keeps them running. It keeps them in good shape. So over here I have thread. I have four boxes um, labeled bias, elastic, lace, and zips. And that's kind of what's in each one. Uh, and then I've got uh, some older pattern catalogs that I find from time to time at Hobby Lobby. And then machine manuals, uh, sewing books, to, you know, envelopes to store my patterns in, some UFOs, more books, and then these are patterns. The way my patterns work, they start right here in my table. And they start with the smallest numbers are here and then they just go across like this. And then I come around the table and they go across some more and then they finish up over here. It made a lot more sense for me. Uh, they were not organized in that numerical fashion before. I mean, they, they started actually, originally they started down right here <laughs> and then went down and then came around this way, but this just makes more sense to me. So. That's that side of the room. I do have a nice mirror right there. And then coming around the other side of the table, I've got my ironing board and my pegboard. This little cart came from Ikea, I think, which is, didn't they start the cart thing? I think they did. And it's got pressing stuff on it. You know, stuff that you need around your iron. Uh, there are buckets here on the floor that have an old serger that needs to be repaired and then um, some UFOs, the tank for my iron, and then this is all basically thread and uh, scissors and just a couple of things I like to have at hand over here. Needles, snaps, and hooks and eyes and a pin cushion and the Raiders and the Raiders because I love them. This I got in England when I was there two years ago. My table is something I'm really proud of and that I really love. And it is just four of those cubbies put together. There are two on the ends, here and here, and then two here and here. They're three feet wide, so it's three feet by five feet. And they are just topped with an old closet door that I refinished, um, put cork on top of, and then put molding around the edges, and then um, just put you know yardsticks on either end and it's just my workspace this um, I have this and then I have another one right over there tucked in behind that that sewing machine you can see it's gray it's just a great workspace so that is my sewing room new and improved with wonderful amounts of wall space and now that light that comes in from the window can bounce all around in this room it's an even happier space for me than it was already. I'm really grateful. I wanted to show you how I got to this point. I'd been thinking about this for months. And finally, uh, my daughter said, she was visiting and she walked in and I said, tell me, what should I do with these bookcases? These monstrous bookcases that I love. I don't wanna get rid of them, but I also don't wanna paint them. And I don't know what to do. I can't put them anywhere else in the house. And she said, well, why can't you put them in the guest room? And I said, I didn't think of that because I was assuming that all the other rooms were full, you know, or they just flat weren't big enough. And so, so I was standing in there the other day and I was looking around and thinking, hmm, how can I do this? My husband walked in and I said, 
I'm trying to figure out how to put those bookcases in here. And he said, well, why don't you get out your graph paper and do your like moving things around thing? And I said, what? He said, you know how you get out graph paper and then you draw it all out and then you draw the little pieces and you move them all around. And I thought, oh, that's a great idea. I've done this before and I wanted to show you how I do it. Basically, I take the measurements of the room and then I take graph paper. And this graph paper is divided up into quarter inch squares. So you kind of think, okay, a foot equals either three or four of those squares or two, depending on how big a space you're working with. So what you do then is mark off the room and the, where the windows are, where the doorway is, and then you measure each piece of furniture that you have in there and you cut those to size and then you can put double stick tape on them and just move them around. Like, here we go. So here's an end table and I moved that around. I just went to town and here are my bookcases and you can see where I tried them over here, I tried them up here, but I ended up with them down here. It just worked the best for everything else in the room and that's how I did it. This is a really great way to be able to um, think through a process um, of designing your house, to be honest. If you're building a new house and you want to know how your furniture is going to fit, you can do this. All you need is a pad of graph paper. It ended up being a lot of work, but it was also a lot of fun because it's like moving the room around without having to move the room around. And it's all to scale, so you know it'll fit. The tricky part is when you have only... Um, like two or three feet and it looks like a lot of space but when you count the squares you know it's only about that much <laughs> so you have to be careful uh, and just make sure you know you, you work with the math as much as you work with the designing you know puzzle playing around so that's how I did it so that's my new sewing room I am uh, it's not really new it's just rearranged more ergonomically so that it works the way that I sew and it works the way I store and the way I uh, work it works the way I work I love it so I'd love to hear your comments about it and uh, I'm gonna link the old sewing room tour when I first moved into this room and redid it and I talked about all of the things, mainly the table and the door. So those were the big projects. But um, yeah, I'll link that for you if you want to give that a watch. That'd be great. And as always, I would love to have you be part of the Jen's sewing room family. I love welcoming people into my sewing room because I am all about community, especially on YouTube. So, so join us. Hit the subscribe button. And, uh, you know... That little thumbs up button, it, it just never hurts to hit that too. <laughs> That's it for now for me and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.